Hey Fragrance Family, I'm Fernando and I'm a Fragrance Pro! Hey Fragrance Family, I'm Daver. And I'm Lanier. And we're the and we're Fragrance the Bros. Fragrance Bros. <laughs> <laughs> Coming out again with another review, this time with special guest Lanier from Sense Memory. How are you doing, Lanier? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Daver? Doing great. Really great to have you on. Uh, really love your channel, and you have probably one of the classiest channels out there. <laughs> well, thank you, and it's a real honor to be on with you. And as I mentioned earlier, you were one of my inspirations, one of the first people I started watching. So it's just a real thrill for me to be on your channel. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And today we are reviewing Noir Exquise by L'Artisan Parfumeur. Now, date introduced is 2015. It's classified as an oriental vanilla. Notes are chestnut, orange, vanilla, heliotrope, orange blossom, coffee, maple sap, ebony, tonka, and sandalwood. Now, Lanier, what do you get out of longevity out of this? Longevity, well, I got about two to four hours out of this. It's not at least on my, my skin, it wasn't something that lasted a very long time. Really? Yeah. I would say that after that four hours, it becomes such a skin scent. I have to stick my nose right into my arm, but I smell just a teeny bit, little bit of woodiness left from it. And I put it on at six this morning, and it's now eight at night. But as far as my recognizing it, three to four hours. I would say on me, it lasted actually a, a pretty long time compared to some of the other Larazon fragrances that I'm familiar with, but I do agree with you that it is on the lighter side. <laughs> on me, it lasted around nine hours or so, which you know I'm completely fine with. I haven't talked about this point before, but what I really like about scents that don't last a long time is that there's some situations that you don't need a fragrance to last very long. You know, if you're going to a casual situation with some friends, you're only going to stay there for a couple of hours max. Mm -hmm. So if you have a scent that doesn't last very long, it doesn't matter because exactly. you, you only need it to last for that amount of time. You don't always wear the same clothes all the way through the day. Sometimes you yeah. want to be casual in the morning, right? sporty in the afternoon, and formal in the evening. And that's a wonderful thing about fragrances that don't last a long time is that you can wear three in one day. That brings me to my next question, which we've kind of alluded to. What about projection? On me, it was low. It was a skin scent, even from the beginning. No one at work uh, could smell it unless I shoved my arm in their face. <laughs> mm. On me, I would say it was decent for a couple of hours, like you said, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then it is really soft really fast. I think overall I'm okay with that. I don't mind fragrances that are quiet at times. Mm -hmm. when one reason I like Lardazon, because I'm, I'm okay with a lighter scent. But yeah, it was it was on the quieter side normally. You know, there's a time for, for being bombastic and there's a time for being quiet and whispering. And this is definitely a quiet whispering kind of fragrance. Season, I would say this is great for fall and great for winter. And I think this would work uh, day or night, probably night more. In, in a place like where I live in San Francisco, something like this you could wear almost any time of the year because mm. we have a very even temperature it never goes above 75 and never below 40 but in the rest of the country or the world where you have seasons yeah. <laughs> that's a whole different story <laughs> purpose this is kind of a trickier one because i think purpose this has a real formal edge to me and outside of that i kind of don't know where you would put this it could probably work for casual situations too um, but that might be it where to put it well i put it on my wrist and then at the nape of my neck and behind my ears no a serious <laughs> I would say, yeah, Christmas, holiday time, go, going to parties, going to hear the Messiah at the symphony or whatever you want, <laughs> yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Out to dinner, yeah. but it's not something um, I would wear to work mm -hmm. unless I worked in Santa's workshop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lanier, what does this remind you of? You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of uh, a Christmas scent by Caron called... Uh, Nuit de Noël, I think mm. it is, uh, that I, Caron only puts out at Christmas time, and wow. it also has a chest, a, a, a candy chestnut kind of smell. It, to me, it reminds me of that. Reminds me a little bit of Larger Saint Parfumier's um, Absinthe. Okay. Uh, ab, fou, ab, fou Absinthe, Absinthe Fou, Fou Absinthe, Crazy Absinthe. Yeah. Uh, that also has a real Christmassy uh, smell to it, but a little more towards a Christmas tree than candy. But. Those, those two it reminds me of. To me, it seems like a holiday scent. When, when, it, when I first put it on, 
I get that real strong kind of, at first I thought it was like a praline, a sweet yeah. praline, but then I realized it smells more like something that um, is called marron glacé, which is a French uh, candied um, chestnut. Okay. And so that I thought you were going to say liquor. <laughs> no, no. You can have it with champagne, but um, when I first got that, I didn't like it. I don't like really, really sweet things, but it only lasted a little while. I don't know about mm. you, but that sweetness wore off pretty fast, and then it got inter more interesting to me. It definitely just is something that uh, I think is an occasion fragrance, you know, like I said, yeah. for, for holidays. Yeah, you know, I, I really like L'Artisan uh, Parfumer. I think they're a great perfume house. One of the things I just really like about them is that they're classy, but they're creative at the same time. Mm -hmm. And because sometimes you have classy scents and they're just kind of old school. Um, whenever I heard that this was coming out, I looked at the notes and I was like, wow, this sounds amazing. And uh, when I smelled it, I, I do think it's amazing. I think it's a great scent. It is definitely a vanilla. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I get what you're saying. Like there is like this almost toasted nut quality in there. Mm -hmm. I get like a real woody quality in there too. Yes. It's like this almost oily, almost smoky wood in there. And I don't know if that's the ebony or if it's other things in there that kind of just create that kind of woody quality. It adds kind of like this bitter note on top of the vanilla that I think is really nice. That woodiness comes into me later on in oh, the dry okay. down. Yeah. It absolutely comes in the dry down. And I think it probably is a combination of that maple sap mm. and the ebony give it a real distinctive sweet but dry, if that makes any sense, yeah. kind of, of feeling. Yeah, I definitely get that woodiness in there. I really like the way this is put together. You know, Bertrand Duchefour, uh made this, and he has a, an amazing <laughs> resume of fragrances. He, he has some of the best made fragrances for perfume houses out there. I don't love everything that he's made, but he thinks so outside the box mm -hmm. when it comes to perfume, and he just makes some just hits. And I think this is another one that's a big hit. I really like the way that he put this together. I smell a lot of the different notes. A lot of the notes kind of lead into other notes. So all the notes kind of have like this, uh, almost like this um, story that goes like a, a beginning, middle, and end from the, from the story, and they, they all kind of join together. One thing, though, is that this kind of reminds me somewhat of uh, Feve Delicieuse by Dior. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly the same. It's, I see the connection. There's a con yeah, there's a connection there. It's mm -hmm. it's a a vanilla based fragrance with bitter woody notes, mm -hmm. and that's the same as Feve Delicieuse. I, I think the the major distinction with this one is I think I think this is much more unisex than uh, Feve Delicieuse is. That one to me has much more of a masculine edge, mm -hmm. and this one kind of I think men or women both could wear this and mm -hmm. be equally at home. Oh, absolutely. I agree with you on that. I keep smelling it. You know, for, for something that I didn't like off the bat, uh, it, it's certainly grown on me. I think that was the same thing with me, too. Every time I smell it, I just like it more and more and more. That's not often that happens with a fragrance. Either you like it or you don't, but for something to develop and grow into you is a real treat. I'm not a big gourmand fan, so for me to be as impressed and enjoy this one as much as I, I've grown to, is a real a real surprise and a treat. I you know I love gourmands. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> the thing about gourmands is how to do it without smelling the same, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it seems like all gourmands kind of go yeah, back to I know vanilla. What you, mean. you know? I know what you mean. Yeah. I think this one does it really well. Mm -hmm. I really love the the bitter aspects of this. You know, I mentioned before in uh, my Feva Delicious review that I've really come to really love bitterness in foods <clears throat> and drink and, and smells as well. And this has that, that just that bitter wood quality that is perfect for, for cooler and cold weather. The only thing I would say that I don't like about it is in the dry down, that woodiness with the bitter note, it almost turns like, like astringent. There's something about it that kind of brings it back, like it goes in and out of that. I guess it's the, the vanilla that kind of brings it back sometimes. I don't know. It's just like, it's just like that wabi-sabi type of thing. It's <laughs> uh -huh. beautiful and ugly at the same time. I don't know. 
Well, there's something to be said about beautiful ugly. Yeah. Definitely. Sometimes that's more interesting than just plain old beautiful. But overall, I think it's a really good scent. And on me, you know, it lasts a, a reasonable amount and it projects a decent amount for the most part. So overall, I just really, really like the scent. I like it too, but it's not a big, it doesn't project for me and it doesn't last as long. But I'm, I'm like Dion of Reland. I'm all about if it, if it runs out on your skin, just reapply. Yeah, definitely. Now, what about compliments? Did you get many compliments while wearing this? <laughs> yes, I did. I, it, it runs the, the gamut. person I talked to said, oh, it's nice and refreshing. The next person said, it smells like a wet muskrat. <laughs> the next person said, there's something funky underneath. There's something funky underneath. She, she liked it, yeah. but there was a funkiness. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't see that funkiness at all. And then um, another one said it smells like sweat and musk, but in a nice way. Now, my wife, she wasn't really sure about this either. Um, I think mostly probably because of the vanilla, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> famous on my channel for not liking vanilla. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With that vanilla comes that bitter wood note. Mm -hmm. And so I think that kind of just kind of threw her off. But other people that I, you know, that I w ran this by, they actually liked it. Now, bang for buck, this is $165 for 100 mil. That's getting up there for price, um, but it's still, to me, not unreasonable. I think that is still in the reasonable range for, for a scent. And I think Lardizan, I think, I think they do good with their price range for what you get. You get a really unique fragrance, very classy, and I think it's a reasonable amount of money for what you get. I absolutely agree. Um, you know, for something that's expensive like this, it's it's not unlike me to save a little money now and then and build up um, a kind of piggy bank for the special fragrance. Yeah. Um, and so, it's doable. Yeah, you can save up for it, and it you won't feel bad about it. You know. No. no. <laughs> not like you know Clive Christian or something like that. Oh where my you're God! Like, I'd be sweating bullets <laughs> if I had to buy a Clive Christian. Are you kidding? <laughs> So Lanier, final rating, what do you give this? I give it a four and a half out of five. Yeah, I'm gonna give this a four out of five. I think this is a fantastic scent. I really love it. Uh, there's just a couple of quibbles that I have with it, but uh, I think that this one is fantastic in its own right. The woody note is kind of a double-edged sword, <laughs> especially towards the dry down. Uh, but I think overall, it's a great scent and really one of Lardizan's best and a great gourmand, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree with you. I, it, it really is spectacular in what it does. It does something for me that I wasn't expecting in, in that it's a gourmand, and I'm, as I said, not a big gourmand person, but it really developed beautifully on my skin, and I really mm. liked where it took me. It was really a, a, an interesting and exciting experience. So that's all we have for Noir Exquise. Uh, let us know what you think of it down in the comments down below. Do you like it, love it, hate it? Let us know. And of course, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe down below. We'll love you for it. And I'll have Lin uh, Lanier's channel down below so you can go to him and subscribe to him as well. He has a fantastic channel. Thank you again so much, Lanier, for coming on. It was a pleasure. Thank you, David, for having me. It was my pleasure to join you for this <laughs> wonderful, wonderful experience. I hope we can do it again. Absolutely. You can come anytime. Thank you. So that's all we have. We'll see you next time with the Fragrance Brothers. Bye.